What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna take a look at this. This is the TechZone Audio Products Stellar X3 Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone. Let's do it! All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle. What I do is I take awesome high gain amps, guitars, caps, speakers, pickups, and microphones, record them with a simple setup, and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes with sciatic issues at 34 years old, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right guys, so as I said in the intro, today we are taking a look at a microphone. This is the Stellar X3 Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone by TZ or TechZone Audio Products. I am not much of a microphone connoisseur. I am definitely not a microphone expert. I've always been really into microphones and recording, but I never really got past the surface level of that until recently. So luckily for me, TechZone Audio Products reached out to me, asked me if I would like to demo this microphone here on my channel, and I said yes. But even though they sent me this microphone for free and asked me to show it to you guys, you guys are still going to get my honest thoughts and opinions on this thing. But luckily for TechZone Audio Products, I think this microphone is awesome. So I'm not gonna go too deep into the tech specs because I don't really know what any of those mean to be completely honest. Again, I am kind of your surface level guy. I am living up to my belligerent amateur self-given moniker. And I don't have a lot of other large diaphragm condenser microphones to compare this to. But what we are gonna do today is we are gonna take a look at how this mic sounds because ultimately, that's what matters when it comes to a microphone, right? I am currently speaking to you on this microphone and honestly, when it comes to voiceover stuff, this is probably my favorite mic that I have spoken into and recorded my voice with. This microphone has a very flat response to it, which is good because I kind of tend to have a little bit of a nasally annoying voice and there are some frequencies that I have to go in on other microphones and kind of notch out. Well, I'm not doing anything to the uh, audio as you guys are hearing it right now. I'm going to leave this completely untouched. The only thing I might do is add a limiter and boost it a little bit just to normalize the volume levels. But I think that this microphone uh, personally sounds really good on my voice and I've really enjoyed using it for a couple of the videos kind of behind the scenes that you guys haven't been able to see in the past couple of weeks. But voiceover is all good and fun. That's not why you guys are here at my channel. You're here at my channel to hear how things sound in a musical context. So I went ahead and I actually used this microphone on a couple of different sources in order to bring you guys a full mixed track where this microphone was used on multiple instruments. So I started off by using this microphone as an overhead mono drum mic. So this mic picked up all of my cymbals and everything. Now I mic'd everything else on the drum kit as you would typically mic a modern uh, metal production where each tom and snare and kick drum had its own individual mic but this was used to mic the overheads of the drums and basically pick up all of the cymbal frequencies. I also use this on a little acoustic guitar intro where I just kinda, you know, broke out my old crappy acoustic guitar to see how well this thing would pick up an old crappy acoustic guitar and I think it did a pretty good job. But most importantly, I used this on both of the guitar tracks on the finished track. I used it in a left and right scenario where the left guitar was, uh, the, the microphone was miking a Vintage 30 speaker and then the right track on the track that you guys are about to hear is miking a Celestian Redback. And honestly, even though this microphone has kind of a neutral response, it actually picked up the guitars really, really well, and I only had to do a couple of small tweaks to it in the mix in order to get it to sit where I wanted it to sit, and I was really happy with the tones that I got overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that track real quick. You're probably gonna be a little bit surprised by it because it is not my typical thrash stuff. I just decided I wanted to do something a little different today, so we kind of have like a uh, folky pop punk type track here. But either way, I think the results kind of speak for them themselves on this microphone, so check it out.
All right, guys, so like I said, let's start off first with the drum overhead tracks. This mic, as an overhead microphone picking up cymbals, did a really good job. There was a lot of definition, especially in the hi-hats. That is one thing I actually showed my mix to a mixing friend of mine, Shane, at Cerebral Audio and he was really surprised at the detail that it was able to pick up, especially when it came to like the hi-hats and everything. There was, even though it is a neutral microphone, there was a lot of detail in the high end of the microphone and it really was able to kind of show a nice picture. You know, every time I would hit a certain symbol, you could hear the definition in that symbol and it didn't sound like everything was all washed out. The hi-hats had nice definition in them again. In the mix process, I had to bring down the high end a little bit on on the microphone, again, even though it's a little neutral, it definitely uh, was picking up some of the harsher frequencies of the room, but a simple EQ tweak with a graphic EQ fix that up right away and honestly I think it ended up sounding really pleasant as an overhead mic and I may end up trying to grab another one of these to use as you know stereo overhead microphones as you should in a proper drum mix but I only had one so I used it as is. One note though I definitely did have to turn on the negative 10 decibel pad on this microphone because the drums even though this thing can record I believe up to a 136 decibel sound sources uh, the drums were just overpowering this mic so I had to uh, hit that 10 decibels and I also had to hit the pad on my interface which was a Scarlett 18i 23rd generation in order to bring the level down enough that it wasn't kind of overpowering the interface and recording too loudly. Now on the overhead source I also did enact the high pass uh, switch on here where you can basically it, it's like a bass cut switch on the microphone where it cuts out some of those lower frequencies because I knew that I didn't want those lower frequencies in there. All of the close mics on the toms, kick, snare were going to pick that stuff up and we were going to EQ it out anyway. So I just went ahead and flipped that on for the recording of the overhead drums and honestly it sounded great no complaints on my end and again I think I'll try to probably pick up a second one so I can use the microphones as a stereo overhead pair because I was really impressed with how they sounded in that scenario. On the acoustic guitar, my acoustic guitar is a cheap Yamaha. Um, it does not sound very good and even though I did put new strings and gave it a slight setup prior to recording the track that I did, uh, it does sound a little bit lifeless but that I don't think is a problem with the microphone. It really recreated my acoustic guitar, how it sounded in the room. It was very faithful to what I was hearing as I was playing the guitar. So say I had something like a nice Taylor or Martin, something that had a lot more depth, something that had some sparkly top end. I have no issues thinking that this microphone would kind of pick that stuff up and reproduce it. And obviously I could go in and mix the acoustic guitar a little bit more to make it sound better. But again, I kind of wanted to leave it as is for the recording, that way you guys got a clear image of how it sounded. And finally, where I really felt that I liked this microphone more than I was expecting to, I was not really expecting to like it too much on the guitar tracks, was the guitar tracks. I kind of just worded that weird for a bad transition, but you guys understand what I was going for. So on the guitar tracks, I really just kind of threw this thing, knowing it was going to be a neutral sounding microphone, I threw it right pretty much in the center of the dust cap on both of the speakers in order to kind of get the most top end response out of the speaker. And I dialed in my Metzabarba Trinity a little bit brighter than I would if I was miking it with something like an SM57 or a Sennheiser E906, knowing that this was gonna be darker. And I really did not have to do much at all to this microphone to get those guitars to sit in the mix the way that I wanted them to. There was a frequency somewhere in the three to 4K range that was a little bit annoying that I kind of searched out and dipped a little bit. And as soon as I dipped it just a little bit, I was really happy with the guitar tone. Now, of course, we put the classic low pass, high pass filters on the guitars in order to get them to sit in the mix like you would with any other microphone where you're cutting off below 120 hertz and then cutting off the extreme highs. And all that I had to do was notch out that one little frequency on both the guitars and it sounded awesome. It really gave it kind of a unique sound. And again, I shared it with my buddy Shane at Cerebral Audio and he was really impressed with the guitar tones that I got using just this microphone and nothing else and kind of just slapping it on the speaker, not really experimenting with different positions. I'm sure if you guys wanted to experiment with different positions, you could get some cool sounds too. That sounded really wrong now that I'm thinking of it, but you understand what I'm talking about. It really is an impressive sounding microphone and I have no problem recommending this thing to you now. This microphone comes in at a price of $349 
brand new. So there are a couple of other mics competing in that same price range that might give you somewhat similar results. Uh, the Rode NT1 is going to be probably the most similar from what I have seen searching around on the internet. Again, I'm not the most experienced person when it comes to microphones, but uh, the Rode will be a little bit more scooped in the mids, giving you a little bit more of a modern sound signature, whereas this thing truly is a very neutral sounding microphone, which means you can kind of mold it with post EQ after the fact a little bit more than something like say the Rode NT1. But again, 350 bucks, what you get with the microphone, you get this really nice all black aluminum carry case. Inside the case, they give you this test certificate where somebody signs off on the testing of it. And I give you, I believe they give you a frequency response graph of your individual microphone here too. That is something that you really only find on more expensive microphones. So this is a nice touch. I mean, typically 500 to a thousand dollar microphone ranges where you start seeing this again, 350 bucks. It shows that Stellar does have a commitment to quality even at that low $350 price point. So again, this is a nice touch. On top of that, you get an additional microphone pouch. Why? I don't know, because we have this thing, but hey, more is better, right? And finally, we get the shock mount that the microphone is mounted in right here. So you get all that for $349. In my experience, I can honestly say this is a fantastic sounding microphone. Someone who is not really well versed in recording, mixing, mastering like myself, and not really all that familiar with a bunch of different microphones, I was able to get it to do exactly what I wanted it to do without really having to screw around with it at all. And I think that that kind of speaks volumes to the capabilities of this microphone when you get somebody who is very limited in their knowledge and their abilities and still get sounds that are good in the end result without much work. That really says more than words. So thanks again to TechZone Audio Products for sending this microphone out. Again, I will link this mic down in the description if you guys want to check it out for yourselves. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button on the way out. Consider subscribing so you don't miss any more belligerent amateur goodness where I review products that I probably don't have any business reviewing and hopefully give you guys some insight into them for your own belligerent amateur uses. If you want to support what it is that I do here, I have some affiliate links, including a Sweetwater affiliate link. You go down into the description, you click that link, get yourself something nice from the fine folks at Sweetwater, and I get a little kickback from anything you buy. It costs you nothing extra, and it greatly helps me out. I would really appreciate it. Or you could consider putting your name on this list of fine people and joining my Patreon community, supporting the channel that way. I'll love you forever, whether you want me to or not. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again, and we'll see you next time.